All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 27th day of August, Sunday, in the year of our Lord, 2023. And I was thinking about Christian music and worship this morning because I'm going to church in a few hours and I was thinking that they, they have a, it's, it's a fundamentalist independent Baptist church um, the best I can find around. Uh, not crazies. Um, they use the King James only, but they're not fanatical King James worshipers, which some are. You know, when your focus is on a, a translation of the Bible rather than Jesus Christ, that's a church that's not a church of Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, I, I like the King James, but all translations have issues. Um, the, the language is dated. That is a problem with it. But it's not under copyright in the United States. That's an advantage. There's, there's a lot of things in its favor to this day. And if you can understand the King James, you can actually probably understand um, great Christian authors <laughs> that wrote in the past, like John Bunyan and some of the others. Uh, even Shakespeare, if you're into that kind of stuff. But uh, the, 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 I was, as I was thinking about this a little bit, and I, there's some people make a real bugaboo about contemporary Christian music. I don't like contemporary Christian music, and there's a reason for it. It's, it's, there's multiple reasons. Just, just like I don't like uh, the fact that uh, modern biblical translations are copywritten and owned almost exclusively by secular corporations. I generally use the New King James. I don't take it to church. I, use, I don't have any problem with the King James, but for an audience that may not be familiar with that language, so I'm, uh, the pitfalls of it, um, that words have changed meaning, some words have changed meaning uh, 180 degrees since 1611. Uh, the New King James is the best compromise. It uses the same Greek source, in spite of what some ignorant people say. It is. It is not a corruption of the King James. The, King, the editors of the King James would not have considered corruption. <laughs> uh, it is one of the uh, purposes that it was written for was to update the King James language without, uh, in a, as an alternative, see, it came out, I think, in 1982, uh, to, the, to the modern critical text stuff. So it was to make the King James more accessible to modern audiences without alternate. There are some alterations, but when they're done, they're, they're done to make it more consistent with the original language, not less. And it's usually, it's, it's, it may all say heaven rather than heavens, or the other way around, depending what the Greek says. Is it plural or singular in the, in the original language? Uh, uh, either the Greek or the Hebrew in the Old Testament. So uh, it's... You know, when you when fundamental Baptists trash the New King James, uh, it just displays their ignorance or the the idolatry of the of a particular translation. It is not a critical text. You know, there, there, there's so many people out there that anything different, they just trash it. Okay, it's, it's not. Uh, in my view on contemporary Christian music, 
is not based on that, other than it just sucks. It is bad. Uh, and I want to, first of all, the, the major problem, What first of all, what does CCM stand for? Is it contemporary Christian music? What does contemporary mean? It means in step with the world. That's what it means. Present times. Present time music. Uh, contemporary. With the times. That's a that's a bad thing right there. But I mean a could a person a, a great hymn could be written today. They're not. Uh, first of all, the people that write them, all the music is copy written Christian music. It's to make money. And they're not written by generally by pastors. They don't write them and then freely put them out there for the church to use to worship. And also, I think it stands for corrupted Christian music because it's not doctrinally examined. Proper, and we're going to look at the verse that, that really troubles me in the Scripture about the, the, these. Now, when I was serving as a pastor, I was always concerned about the hymns that we sung were theologically proper. I mean, there's in almost all hymn books, there's some atrocious music. Especially in America, I, I, I won't go to a church near the Fourth of July because you know, like the uh, the Battle Hymn of, Re of the Republic is terrible. It's a piece of northern from the Civil War northern propaganda. It it glorifies the Union War on the South. That's what that song's all about. That's why it's called the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Uh, Christians should be singing that? No. The, the northern victory is not uh, the armies of God. No, that's not the, the northern forces. No, they were as corrupt as anything that there was. The, not that the southern forces were perfect either. No, the, the whole... It, the sinfulness of man is manifested in things like the American Civil War and everything else. So uh, the other thing is, what is this, the hymn that says, My Country, Tis of Thee, that they sing in secular schools even. I remember singing that in, in school. It's like, wait a minute. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee, not God, of thee, the land, my country, I sing. Idolatry, worldly propaganda and idolatry. It's called civil religion, which is a bad thing. It's the idolatry of the state and the systems of it. It's, it's like the worship of capitalism. It's like, you know, what they teach people in this country and other countries, because it's done the same all over the place, different content sometimes, but is... is Conforming you to the world. It's all satanic. It's Satan's system. Everything that's in this world is not from God. It's contrary. It's a product of Satan and a fallen man. <sighs> Satan up there is steering things. What else is it? CCM, commercial Christian music, corrupted Christian music, copyrighted Christian music, cruddy Christian music. The problem with this, in multiple levels, again, you've got people out there that are not qualified to teach in the church, writing music that's sung for worship in the church? No! No, and all these songs should be carefully examined by the pastors and elders for approval, doctrinally examined. It's not simply, some people get so upset about styles. There's a certain purpose. I mean, rock and roll is a, a came from rebellion. I mean, there's no place for rock and roll in the church. No place for drums in the church. What in the world is going on there? What purpose do they serve in Christian worship? None. 
you know, a, a piano or organ, if, if they're there for the purpose of helping people to sing uh, in an orderly way, in harmony, and, you know, the, to follow the melody, it's so that they, we can focus on worship, which is in, well, we'll look at that. What is worship? It's not emotional, you know, it's like the charismatic worship is not Christian worship. It's not. Uh, and so today, I know that this this church has generally been quite good at being resistant to the modern trends. But I do notice they managed to sneak one on one song that's not in the hymnal in every week. Put it on the screen. I don't think the pastor is responsible for that. Uh, so you don't know. You can't. What I do because of some of this stuff so bad is I want to read what the words are in the hymn or the song or whatever you call those things before I utter those words in worship. And I was thinking today what this brought this up is I know they're going to do that again and I, I'm uncomfortable with this contemporary music they're putting up there. It's, it's always, oh, another thing what CCM stands for, carnal Christian music, because it always comes from the flesh. And it's always focuses on yourself rather than Christ. It's like, I love you, Lord. Is that even a true statement? And that's the problem. So let's look over at God's word here quickly and what Jesus says here. This is uh, in the chapter 4 of John where uh, Jesus has the encounter with the, the woman at the well, the woman that has had seven husbands and now she has another that's not her husband. Gave up on that marriage thing, apparently. <laughs> but he says here, in verse 23 of John chapter 4, The hour is coming, and now is. So it's something that will, even more so in the future, and has already begun. Because Christ is here. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses who do not believe in the Holy Spirit, that he's just the, a, a, the power, the, the electric force of God, or something like that, a non-personal power. Wow, they know nothing. They don't know God. Don't be deceived by those people. Just tell them. They come to your door, ask them if they're Christians or not. And when they say they if they claim to be Christians, like they will, say, no, you're not, because you do not believe in the Jesus of the Scripture. You do not accept that Jesus is God. Be gone. <laughs> Antichrist. Well, you don't necessarily have to say it that way, but they, 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 they deny the Father and the Son. John says this is Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and Son. Say there's many people that do that. Antichrist is not one individual. We need to test all the doctrines men teach us to see if they're really teaching what Scripture teaches. And over time, we'll find things that, no, no. Uh, So God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit. Not with the Jehovah's Witnesses translation. The New World translation says, which is, which is, that could have been done by Google, probably better, says a with spirit. No, the Greek doesn't say with spirit. It says in spirit. In spirit doesn't mean enthusiastically. It doesn't mean emotionally. It means in the Spirit of God, according to the will of God, 
with his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit being the worship leader. And that has nothing to do with the charismatics. They're, they're not in that stuff. They're manipulative. M music to put you into a state of unconsciousness, hypnosis. It's just, you know, the repetitive junk. That is what Hindus do in their meditation. They seek to lose their mind. No, Christians, we want to consciously worship God. We, need, we want to love him with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. How can you worship God, Christ for what he did for us on the cross without contemplating that act mentally? Saying, I love you, Lord, means nothing. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. In other words, obedience to God is, we obey those who we love. It flows out of it as a fruit of love. The obedience of faith, the obedience of love. For the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Now, if we apply this to, to church, we should be seeking to worship in spirit and in truth. That means according to God's word, because that is inspired, God-breathed. And by the Holy Spirit, and in truth, Christ is truth. God is truth. There are churches that, that strictly use the Old Testament Psalms, but this, the Psalms are utterly insufficient for Christian worship. Uh, some will say that's heretical. No, it's not. David did not... It, it, the new covenant was not in force. How can you worship God in spirit and force and truth when using Old Testament temple songs that were under the law when and they had basically no real knowledge of what Christ did for us on the cross? It was types and shadows. Now Christ has actually come. He actually accomplished his work and has ascended into heaven and poured out his spirit. We should have much better worship than they had in the Psalms. The Psalms are inadequate. They can't speak clearly about Christ crucified and Christ risen from the dead and Christ dying for our sins. There's hints of it in them, but that's not sufficient. We want to openly proclaim these truths and worship God for what he has done and who he is. It used to be people that wrote hymns were people like Martin Luther, John Wesley, and others. Charles Wesley, um, not so much John. Wesley's brother. Now, these have to be examined carefully to see if they are biblically sound because in some cases, because of the beliefs of these people and others, uh, they're somewhat corrupted. Some of these things need to be edited uh, or people just write things that are biblically correct. Uh, and not anything, people today, because we are so influenced by the contemporary world, and we are so conformed to the world in so many ways, unless you're Amish, even that. Are, but that for the Amish, I'd say, are you born again? Are you simply following a tradition? which is what I fear. Do they really know Christ? They are far removed from uh, Menno Simons, their, their uh, founder, distant founder of the Mennonites, the Anabaptists, that, that group, the Dutch Anabaptists. 
who insisted you must be born again and insisted that your life demonstrate that. And they, they took some things too far, and they were they were a little short on other things. Menno Simons was a little sim, you know these, but these were con converted Catholic priests, all of them, Luther, all these guys. So they were they come out of a a world system of Catholicism. And, you know, there's, we all err in many things. But what do you do when you don't even have an opportunity? I cannot. I, I really feel uncomfortable, and I generally just don't open my mouth. When they put these, these songs or hymns up on the screen, and I don't know what they're going to be. How can I sing worship in spirit and truth with words that aren't mine and that I haven't examined. Pastors are irresponsible. They they need to grab hold the reins of these things and reel, the, uh, reel them in and say, you are not going to use music in this church unless it's been examined by the elders or the pastor or the deacons of this church for sound doctrine and uh, no significant error. I mean, because it's not inspired by the Holy Spirit, there's, it's not going to be perfect. But there's uh, the uh, can they can the leadership of churches even do this? Because we are Christians. We have no sound biblical doctrine of separation uh, from the world that do not be conformed to this world and we don't understand how deeply conformed we are how pervasive that is that's that is the entire world system the way things are done by the world like copyrights how dare well, why do christians you know so, so, um, I'm going to use Russia as an example here. So all the uh, this present thing in Ukraine, and I think Russia basically did what was right coming in. And the United States is, is a pinnacle of evil in this world. And it's, it's uh, since at least George W.'s time, the United States, the doctrine of the United States is we're the head of the world. We're the, we're the god of this age, and we're going to control all things. And anybody that, that tries to resist will be squashed. And once uh, the Soviet Union disassembled itself, the United States didn't defeat it. It simply disassembled itself. It didn't financially collapse. There's a lot of American myths, you know, boasting by America. It's not true. Uh, there's a whole history there that, that I remember that you know the news media is part of the world they tell they speak lies they don't speak truth they speak lies it's all they know is lies none of it's true not in the sense that god's true they don't know what truth is they don't care about truth they don't they don't they don't love truth they love profit these are all for profit corporations see the whole american system is corrupt to its very core. It's sinful to its very core, just like socialist systems are sinful to their very core. Everything of the world is sin. None of it's obedience to God. None of it's grounded in God. Because it can't be, because Adam died spiritually, and all his descendants partake of that death. That spiritual death, being separated from God. Only those who have, have born are born again. That's been partially. Uh, we're partially fixed, but our bodies aren't. We're still living in these mortal bodies in this world, and we're full of all kinds of ideas in our brain that we've been taught by the world. And Paul, that's why Paul says, do not be conformed. Do not be molded into this world system. Do not do things the way the world does. Christians deliberately model themselves after the world. Oh, the world successfully does it this way. That's what we should do. 
Uh, Rick Warren is a good example of that. He doesn't serve Jesus Christ. One of the few things the Southern Baptist, Baptists have done recently, correct, was to kick out his church, but they didn't kick it out for the right reason. Because they are so contaminated. And they do things, they are so, that organization, that structure called the Southern Baptist Convention, is carnal to its very core, fighting with each other. It's like the feuding going on among orthodoxy, uh, the orthodox Catholic churches as opposed to the Roman Catholic church, the, what we call Eastern Orthodox. I became aware that the, the, the head of the ghost church of Constantinople, who is the first among equals, you know, among, among the, uh, the primates of the orthodoxy or whatever they call themselves, uh, the feud between them and the and the Russian Orthodox Church. I mean, that's it's just ungodly wickedness. I mean, I I suspect this guy's in the pocket of the CIA. Um, His Holiness uh, Bartholomew, or whatever he is. Now Constantinople, there's no real church there. I mean that that's. Constantinople doesn't exist anymore. It was destroyed by the Turks in 1453. And since then, basically Russia became the, the custodian or the protect, you know, the, the guardian of, of orthodoxy. And then the, the, the head of the ghost church presumed to, to uh, make Ukraine an independent... Uh, and that was under the the uh, Russian primacy. He uh, was, you know, like a subdivision of it. But they, they he granted them independence. Well, he doesn't have the authority to do that. Here's a guy that that is not in charge. That does not the head of of Rush, the Russian fragment of orthodoxy. Granting churches under that independence from Russia, Russian, the Russian Orthodox Church. Really? I mean, all this stuff is of man. But, wow, how, carnality on display, just like you see in the Southern Baptist, carnality on display. Internal infighting, infighting. This, this is just, that's one of the things that really, when, when I saw that, when I was my short time among them I was like this is this is ungodliness obvious worldliness but the the the, the, the uh, why do churches allow CCM in because it's popular it's pleasing the people rather than pleasing God even the best of it is sensual and man-centered. And it's about uh, uh, the charismatic music is all about evoking emotions. It's a false spirituality. It is not the Holy Spirit that moves among charismatics or Pentecostals. The whole Pentecostal and Charismatic movement were built upon lies that are totally unbiblical. A second work of grace. And they go back to John Wesley. John Wesley is the real father of that. John Wesley did not hold to the, author the primacy of Scripture, the authority of Scripture alone. He also believed that experience is authority authoritative, tradition is authoritative, Reason is authoritative. His four-legged stool. No, only Scripture is truly authoritative for real Christians. God has spoken fully in Christ. And the gospel was fully delivered unto the church through the apostles. So if you think that's not enough... 
their record is not enough. What they have written is not sufficient. The Scripture says it is sufficient. Second Timothy, Paul says the Scripture is sufficient for every good work. So if, unless you're up to evil, that's the only situation when the Bible is not sufficient for the man of God, is if you're seeking something other than good work. <sighs> But how can we worship in spirit and truth when the, the hymns that we're supposed to be singing in worship, this is the, the primary way the congregation is allowed to worship. List, listening, you know, other than listening to scripture being read, I think sermons should be cut down a lot. There should be more scripture reading. You know, that's where the Catholics and, and traditional Protestantism actually is better. There, there's some elements in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, their sung liturgy is like grates on my ears because it's not what, what I was raised with. But it's like, really? That's not necessary. Uh, but traditional liturgies, liturgical, all churches have liturgies, but you know, whether it's Protestantism, Orthodoxy, or Catholicism, there's a the congregation is actually much more involved in worship. You know, you have the the uh, the call and response thing going on uh, in the written liturgy. Uh, whether it's of spirit or not is you know I don't know, but the the congregation is actually has much greater role in the worship than they do in a typical evangelical church, which is so pastor centered. So now, of course, uh, the the music is you have worship teams. Where where is the where in the Bible is there a a position in churches for worship leaders? Where does the Scripture reveal any of these things that we should be doing these things? It doesn't it? Doesn't uh, it's conformity to the world? It is modeling. You know, CCM doesn't come. Uh, it, the CCM really the movement came from the uh, the Jesus Revolution the 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 youth movement of the 60s and 70s uh, Jesus freaks uh, the Jesus people whatever you want to call them and I was in the tail end of that but I wasn't really associated with them that the God was doing work among the young people then because they were realizing the bankruptcy of of the world of America, that prosperity is not uh, satisfying. See, our generation was raised post-World War II in that, in that baby boomer generation, uh, and, and it wasn't, uh, there were problems, but there was a lot of prosperity. Uh, people, you know, had one car, two cars, uh, maybe a house in the suburbs or, you know, a three-bedroom home someplace, whatever. Uh, coming out of World War II, there, America was the king of the world as far as we were the only nation, large nation, that wasn't destroyed. So we were big industrial power and suddenly became the greatest industrial power uh, of all. Dominant. Uh, that we hadn't been directly impacted by that war. It was off there. It was in the Pacific. It's, it was in Europe. It wasn't fought here. So that left the United States in, as a relatively undamaged survivor, at, at least physically. But the the people, the young people, see, are, are parents grew up in the Depression uh, with lack, and then they went through the, the, the World War II. And then after that, it was, okay, this, this, we want to, our children to have everything we didn't. So the striving after, after a house and a nice house and possessions that their parents couldn't provide or, you know, they were suffering during the Depression. 
my grandfather, one of my grandfathers had to go out west to find work on the railroads and maybe send some money back. My grandmother had to, my father's side I'm talking about, had to work in a bakery, babysit for a doctor's family, do whatever they could to come up with money to, to survive. I didn't grow up with that. We never went hungry. Didn't have a next. My dad moved around a lot. He was a professional, uh, seeking to. Well, I finally figured out why some of the things that happened to us happened to us. He would, didn't want us to grow up in a city like Chicago. He made a lot of sacrificed a lot of things in some ways uh, personal success in order that his family might grow up in a better environment. See my my grandparents I think this is true on both sides didn't own their houses they had to rent houses so but we uh, grew up my myself and my brothers and sisters not suffering lack, always, almost always, unless it was a temporary situation, while we were building a house, uh, with all these things. The only sacrifice we had was maybe eating too much hamburger and too much uh, macaroni or something like that, rather than having hamburgers were not served as hamburgers they were always mixed in as just stretching the food for seven children and paying things off and saving for the future and all these other things because of you know the the um, trying to have financial security because of the way they grew up Whereas I have always been a little bit not enough concerned about some of those things. It's like, God will take care of it. But that's true, of course, especially once I was born again. I mean, that, that separated me from the world. There, the, the struggle was within me between the wrong things that were... The, of Adam, the struggle between Adam and Christ within me, this wrestling match, is what came about after that. But here, as far as worship, Christ, a true Christian wants to worship in spirit and truth. You know, this charismatic stuff, it's, it's like, this isn't right. I've seen it. Why do I know it's not right? Because the Spirit of God's in me. The Spirit of God is not affirming what's going on. Um, I don't care what they say. They're so-called miracles. I realize, you know, you realize these miracles and everything they're claiming are, fo are, are false. The love of the truth prevents me from... It, I never could really get into that stuff because there's the Spirit of God in me. It's like, uh, I was being restrained. Yeah, uh, the love of the truth will dus definitely affect your relationship with the church world and the non-church world because it's not of the truth. Like I was saying, the whole Pentecostal charismatic movement was built on lies, complete lies. They go back basically to Wesley. The second work of grace is not biblical doctrine. It's a lie. If the Bible doesn't teach it, it's a lie as far as, as biblical truth, as Christian doctrine. If it's not taught in the Bible, it's a lie. God gave us all the truth we need. If you're not satisfied with it, you ought to be concerned about yourself and your salvation. Something's wrong. So what do we do? It's like this morning I'm thinking, I can't, I've, I, there's this growing, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll go with things for a while, but I'm not comfortable, and then it comes to a point where I just can't do this. I mean, this is the best church around here that I've been able to find. There are the 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 uh, 
Lutheran Church, Missouri Center that I visited a couple times, uh, even though it's not like I was raised with it, I do like the pastors focused on Christ and Him crucified, but I do not like the sacramentarianism of it. You know, there, there's some serious problems with Lutheran doctrine and the sectarian element of of Lutheran Church in Missouri Senate. Of course, they don't have a fellowship with practically anyone. They wouldn't allow other Lutherans, unless they're officially in communion with them, to come in and, and partake of the Lord's table. But, you know, so there, there are certain things there that say, no, I can't go there. I mean, I mean, I can't really even attend there on a regular basis because... There's certain things that I appreciate about it, but there's certain uh, things that I don't that are more important. The gospel overrides everything, and that's the church I'm going to right now. The pastor, you know, even even though there's doctrinal issues that I don't agree with, as far as the gospel, I agree. I wish he'd be, even though he only preaches the gospel like two or three times during his sermon. It's not like it's what I one thing I have to say about him is is it's it's not simply an altar call at the end. It's not the typical thing anyway. But he gives an opportunity, which is which is Baptist tradition, especially fundamentalist Baptists, to anyone that desires to come forward and, and accept Christ. But he's preaching the gospel all through now and then, so it's. Uh, you know, especially where the scripture is not focused on that particular subject at the moment. It, he works it out. So that's good. That's good. That, that's uh, the Missouri church minister working Christ and him crucified. And consistently, regardless of what the text was, I appreciate that. It's just uh, denominations are bad news. They just are. They're of the world. The de there's no denomination that's of God because it's contrary to the word of God the very fact that you're you're this sectarian thing Rome being the biggest sect of all uh, and the most ex you know that's awful of course the current Pope is trying to destroy all things <laughs> including Roman Catholicism so it's not that there's no truth there. It's simply there's been it's been slimed over by two thousand years of corruption. But what do you do? What do I do? I'm thinking, you know, when they when and when they have the CCM song. You know, they always have to put the thing on the bottom. Yeah, we, we bought the license to use this. They had to pay like $200 a year or more, depending on the size of the church, for a license to sing this trash. And the, the whole CCM industry, it's the contemporary Christian industry, this music industry is not run by Christians. It's controlled by the world. People like Michael Jackson bought up the right to most of these songs. Rich, wicked people are the ones that run it, just like the Bible translations. Most of the, the, the rights and the, is, and the publishing is done by wicked corporations, worldly corporations, not Christians, which is a good reason to buy a good, nice, beautiful King James Bible I got one out here. No, oh, that's not my good ones. From like church publications, a Baptist church that does it at no profit, sells it at no profit. They're not all done so well. There's some particulars that were, uh, but yeah, uh, that's another reason to use the King James. As long as you don't get into the King James only cult, uh, we can. We, but you have to be aware that you need to familiarize yourself and 
double check things to make sure that you're not uh, confused by uh, uh, older English and usages. It doesn't happen all the time. Most of the time it's, it's transparent. Whether it's ye or thee, I mean, if you can't understand that, how'd you get out of high school? Shakespeare would be like a foreign language. Paradise Lost would be completely unintelligible to you. But here, it's again, it's worship in spirit and truth. Our is your church serious? And this is a, as a not currently an active pastor, but uh, I'd look back at myself and say, I, I didn't take this stuff seriously enough. I mean, I did try to uh, say, okay, th these are this is a selection of hymns that we'll use. And but my criteria, I remember when I first did that, and I was brand new, green, didn't know what I was doing. Uh, Except I knew the Christ. I knew the gospel. That's what I knew. Which is more than most, <laughs> I think. But uh, the the uh, one of my criteria. Now this is not bad, but it's not was. This is not the principal criteria. First of all, it has to be sound, basically biblically sound. But it has to be familiar to the congregation. You cannot worship with an unfamiliar song, because you your, your heart and mind and spirit are to be directed toward God. You're using words that aren't your own anyway. So if, if it's not familiar, and again, the problem of, of not having personally examined what you're saying, you're, you're saying things to God that's supposed to be truth, and you haven't even read it yet. Where's the time to contemplate on this, to test it doctrinally? Is this biblical? Do you engage in 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 uh, Roman Catholic prayers to the Virgin Mary? We have to understand that these hymn books today, especially, are written for commercial purposes to make money for the publishers. CCM is not about truth; it's about money. It's about profit and these contemporary Christian artists are professionals what does that mean they're doing it for money there is no biblical basis for that for them being and hymns are teaching teaching the congregation What's being communicated in hymns and songs in the hymn book, the congregation is repeating. It is a teaching device. Luther understood that. He wrote some pretty good hymns. I certainly wouldn't endorse all of them, but a mighty fortress is our God. For example, Should have a little more gospel in it, but it's pretty good. I mean, Luther wasn't wrong on the gospel. It's just that he was too tolerant, uh, didn't expel enough of uh, Rome's. He was he was still deeply Roman Catholic uh, in a sense. That's that's what he was he was of. I mean, all these guys were came out of that. You don't get rid of all that stuff overnight. Uh, your whole world, you know, it's everything that's in you is filled with that. You, you can't just set yourself free instantly. Uh, your, your mind is full of it. Our minds have to be renewed. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You renew your mind with prayer and with scripture and uh, trusting in God and having received his spirit and the love of truth. And working through these things, when you fire, find something that's not true, you discard it. Which causes problems for you. 
because you're no longer everybody else is doing it well you have to be willing not to do what everybody else is doing well they're going we're going to have an easter egg event for the kids did you ever examine that biblically or we're going to have and the, well the, the, the churches do this including this church uh, a, a halloween thing a, a, a substitute for what the world does okay but it, it, that's you can't always provide a substitute you should be teaching your children that don't do what the world does to avoid those things just not to participate in it that it just because something's fun if it's fun it may not be good because sinful people fun for sinful people is always sinful they hate what is good by their nature they can't they're sinful you have see the, the uh, some of these ideas that are so important in scripture we don't understand how important and pervasive they are the the sinfulness of of fallen man pervades everything all the things that are in the world not just some of them it's all sinfulness as it says in the proverbs that even the plowing of a sinner is wicked why 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 is how can plowing your field to raise wheat for example be sinful because it's not done in faith and it's not done with the right motives it's done out of selfish self-centeredness self-centeredness it's not done in relationship with god in and it's not done with in praise of god see a christian when he's doing things like this or working or whatever it is should be giving thanks to god god should be part of your life all your life and i was rather bemused by a comment on a video one time when i mentioned that i went for a walk with god and she's the woman who was i think was a presbyterian or something like that uh called that ridiculous so wait, and i said wait a minute does not God's Spirit dwell in you? If the Holy Spirit, how can you say you don't go? You know, if you if you're going for a walk, the Holy Spirit's with you. If you're born again, He's going for a walk with you. How could it be otherwise? You might not be conscious of that, but you should be. Don't you believe that the Spirit of God is in you? It's, I don't mean that the God was materialized next to me, you know, and that, that when we went down for a walk together. No, no, but God in you. And being going for a walk, being conscious of that fact and having a conversation with God. Now, I don't expect an English answer, but I do know that, that when I am in prayer and in communion with God, God enlightens my understanding. That's what it usually is. I remember when, when the Holy Spirit revealed the gospel to me. It's not didn't come in words. It suddenly I knew and understood. I had been exposed to the fact that Christ died for our sins my whole life, basically. But it didn't register. It was just something that I'd been told. But when God opened my understanding and I, I realized that Christ died for my sins and it wasn't through somebody else it wasn't through listening to somebody else or reading something or no it was God the Holy Spirit opened my understanding you know I said the Holy Spirit I could say the Holy Spirit spoke to me he did in communicating the gospel to me but it wasn't verbally it suddenly I knew that Christ died for all my sins past present and future fully paid Christ died for the sins of the whole world but for mine too and realizing what that meant even in a very imperfect way <laughs> even still in a very imperfect way there's so much there like how can I to grasp that is to grasp God. Uh, 
because the one who died on the cross is God. God manifests in the flesh. Who can grasp that? The theologians can't. I'll tell you. I've some of these these volumes that I've bought. I've, I've hoped. You know, okay, what do they say about the incarnation? About God becoming man and walking among us? They say very little. That's what they say. Because how can you? How can you even communicate that in words? Other than in a very short statement, like like John, how can you how can you improve on what John said? Uh, that and the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us. Wow. I mean, we sh if we, if we contemplate in some of these very simple statements, there it's it's jaw dropping. And that's what worship is. Our, our, we should be jaw-dropped. We should be flabbergasted at God's self-revelation of these things. Odd. Speechless. Sometimes being speechless is true worship. Truer than speaking. The of not some man-induced feeling, but genuine Holy Spirit produced awe and reverence. Not self-produced. We should be careful to keep our churches free from the ways of the world. And I realize that that produces much resistance. Uh, because there's things beloved by the by Christians that are of the world, like like the uh, the fight for Christmas, because the tr the traditions of Christmas in the United States, the vast majority of them come from the world, and they are satanic in that they supplant the true meaning of God sending his son into the world with everything else. Santa Claus, gifts, partying, all this stuff is of the world and it's satanic because it seeks to suppress the reality of what God did, to supplant Christ's incarnation with the lies of the world and the pleasures of this world. That's why it's satanic. But if you speak against what, you know, the, the, the so, it, but people are so in love with these things that it's almost impossible to, to get people to cease participating in the worship of this world and rather worship God in spirit and in truth. It's one of the battles that every true born-again Christian faces. We have to be serious about it. It doesn't mean we produce it. We have to trust God to teach us how to worship in spirit and in truth. Because all of salvation is of God. And all of salvation is through faith. Not just being born again, but all of the Christian life is done by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. All of it, daily life as a Christian, depends on that. And if you're trying to do it by your effort and your piety and following certain principles, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to do that, then it becomes a chore and it's not worship in spirit and but sometimes the best thing we can do is not participate. Not raise a big fuss. Maybe simply not participate. Maybe not sing. Okay, or, or the, like today I'm thinking, I might not stand up. I might not stand up and sing a song I do not know. It just doesn't seem right. 
doesn't seem safe. How do I know what's going to appear on the next slide? And I do not know this person that wrote it. But I know it's not in the scripture. I can sing that. We need to examine these things. We need to worship God in spirit and truth because those are the people he's seeking to worship him, those who do that. 